and welcome to Wet Winnipeg. Now the wetness, it kind of dampens my spirits you might say, but on the other hand I'm sort of glad to see it uh, because uh, it's going to help our local forest fire situation. Unfortunately it's, I don't think it goes far enough west to uh, help the forest fires over there in Alberta. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, enough about the weather. Let's, uh, let's see if we can do a little bit more modeling today. Anyway, uh, I am very glad that I, I did stop yesterday morning and get out when I did because yesterday late afternoon it was pouring. So, uh, yeah. Did I, did I say something about we're going to get at this? Well, let, let's actually do it. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I got to nip off all my little parts. Remember yesterday I was concluding that we don't need to keep them separate because they're, dis they're distinctive enough difference in them that I won't get them mixed up. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, let's see what we can do here. Now, I know that uh, a lot of you guys, when you nip off a part, you'll, you'll sort of mark it off somehow, maybe with a circle or maybe some sort of a, a highlighter or something like that. Uh, but what I usually do is, and, and I have in the past uh, circled circled parts after, I think on the Bismarck I might have done that. I'd have to check the manual to see it because I can't remember anymore. But anyway, I usually will, will start from left to right. And the first one here from the left is we need two pieces of C14. Well, it's pretty distinctive. I don't even have to look for the number 14. You know, clearly it's it's this piece right here. Um, am I seeing little pegs on the top there? Okay, the, here, we, here we have the pegs on the top. Let's, let's put the macro lens on and see if there's any kind of pegs on the bottom, because because obviously this is this is the uh, the top of the rail where the pegs are. Yeah, there's pegs there. I can I can I can actually feel it. Okay, let's put the macro lens on and move right in, because I I honestly cannot see if there's any pegs on the bottom there where there where the connect. No, there there isn't, because there would be on this one right here. And there, there is nothing there. So, uh, well, that'll make it a lot easier for nipping off. If we want to preserve the pegs, well, that means we have to, you know, don't remove them when we're nipping. Okay, let's, uh, where's my macro lens? Okay, I was just looking at our part here, number 14, and I was trying to find a place that I said you can feel that there's no peg on the bottom, and I think I must have been brushing against this one up here. But but here's another case of, I believe that this is probably the top, at least if we go by the way the numbers are right set up. Um, but I am not seeing any, any pegs on the bottom of our 14. But there is on, on this, so let's just for the fun of it, preserve it. Oh, I scratched it. I keep forgetting about the fact that I painted it. And, if I, if I scrape the the cutter on it, okay, let's turn this around. Okay, it should be in the field of view. And here we don't need to worry about preserving a peg because there is none. Might have got a little close to the railing on that one. Whoops. Did it again. Okay. I was just looking around. I can't find my tin. What happened to it? Okay, I got the second number 14. Moving over to the right, we now need 18. Two of them. Okay, I'm noticing here that these are not going to be what you might call identical once they're bent. I think that this is the one that has to be bent in sort of a, an L-shaped, a double L or something like that. 
I'm going to try something different. Instead of putting my, my blade on here and dragging it back and waiting for it to drop off, I'm going to put the blade on the part that we don't care about and try and slide up to... See, this is kind of kind of hard to do because it wants to dig in. That's it. Okay, we got it. Just hold that down here, get my fingers out of the way. And those were my fingers, not my toes. Okay, did we did we get it? Yeah, we got it. Okay, let's turn it around here. And get my cutter right side up. Okay, I did get the other 18. Moving to the right, we need a ladder. Uh, actually, we need two ladders right here. And if we move way over to the right out of sight here, there's uh, another one. So I guess we need a total of six of these altogether. I, I had originally thought we only needed four, but uh, yeah, we need six number eights. There are three E sprues or frets. We got this one, we got this one, and you can see that the, the number eights are removed out of both of these. Now the third one does have all four, but uh, we need six, right? Now here's the problem. We have a little tin here that has uh, two already made up, but I'm got a label there that says number 10. Now, does that mean that the 10 is for this ladder or, or what? I don't know. So uh, what I want to do, I'm going to very carefully here, using uh, Tony's tweezers, we're going to just pick this up that's marked a 10 and we're going to just sort of sort of superimpose it you might say on top of you know what i think i better put the macro lens a little closer the macro lens is on right now but it's backed off it looks like the stringers are the same length or no they're not, it's not the same. It is not the same. I wonder if I made a mistake and I used a, a number eight here um, uh, on a previous, previous uh, step when I should have used a 10. So hopefully these two tens will, will fit because you can, you can see here the the stringer on the on the one that's painted is shorter than the ones that are on the fret at, at least from from my perspective it is so just let me take another little measurement I'm trying to get this to lay on its side and it uh, it just doesn't want to cooperate here okay let's get it down in the bottom here no, you, you can see that it's shorter. Okay. Okay. Now, hopefully that number 10 is uh, not going to be so much smaller that it's going to just sort of fall right through. Maybe what I'll do is when we actually get to placing these, I'll check to find out where on the uh, ship they have to go. It is quite possible that uh, they, they could go in a place that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a ladder there or not because you can't see it. Although I, I don't think so. 
Okay, turn this around. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, Pablo in, uh, I think Argentina, I think you're, you are, I'm not sure. Uh, you, your comment, uh, you were right, absolutely right. Okay, I do believe I've got everything now. No, oh, it doesn't want to come up. Oh, here we go. I think maybe my blade was sticking into the plastic on the other side. Maybe if I was to turn the blade the other way. Try it this way. Yeah, it kind of works better. Now don't bend the rail. And one more. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, we are back to the C sprue again. And we need 30 and 31. And being as, where are they here? They are very close together. 30, 31, may as well get them both at the same time. Okay, it looks like these ones have the little pins or pegs on the top as well. It's okay, it didn't go very far. All right, I'm just gonna do that the same on the other one. Okay, we've got our number 30 and our number 31 and the number eight ladder. So now we need the C6, two of them. Okay, here we go, number six. And it is a biggie. All right, let me just grab the ends here first. pegs on the top of the stanchions. We will try to preserve those. And turn it over here. Okay, 
I'm just going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. Okay, up until about five minutes ago, I thought that this was all one piece. But I can see now it's <laughs> two separate pieces, you know. Uh, we've already got our uh, our number eight here, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, let's, let's get this little guy here first. I don't think these are going to be close together, so we won't be getting them at the same time, most likely. So we need number 29, two of them. Okay, I was sort of thinking afterwards that maybe you would have liked to have seen where on the manual I was looking, and it was right here. And it appears that, now this, this arrowhead is kind of covering up the, the edge, but it goes right here, so it doesn't get bent at a right angle. It looks like it gets bent about 45 degrees. Just for the fun of it, let's, let's find it on the, on the uh, model. Okay, we are what you might say a little bit dusty here. Try and get rid of some of this. We are going to have to give our ship a big cleanup before we put it in the case, aren't we? Okay, now, where's my pointer? I think that the next piece we're going to be cutting actually goes along the edge right here. But that part that I was talking about it only gets bent at a 45 degrees. Goes right here. Okay, you can probably hear my microwave running in the background. And I have carrots, potatoes, and onions. And a little bit of vinegar in the bottom of my casserole. So uh, that is going to be my lunch later. I'm back on my diet again. No pizza today. Uh, okay, the last piece here, number nine. As far as I know, it's the last piece. Okay, this is number nine, not number ten. And uh, speaking of diets, in yesterday's episode, Tennessee Jim was asking me if the uh, scooter had adjustable rear suspension. Because I was mentioning how I could feel that it had bottomed out occasionally when I was on it. And I said no. But what it does do is it loudly calls out, Hey fatty, how's the diet going? Okay, whoops, I scratched that off. Well, that's okay, maybe repeating anyway, right? Probably not. How come I can't feel that one? Oh, you know what? I'll bet you I've nipped off the peg here. Oh, no, I didn't. It's still there. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I thought I nipped through that. I guess not. Okay, so I've got these, i got these. Let's just turn this around here. Okay, where is number nine? It is okay. Now the uh, I think it's Piaggio scooter, uh, and I think the model number was the Liberty. Now I was very interested in that one. It was a slightly more heavy-duty scooter than my little Honda, but it was a lot more money. At least here in Winnipeg, it was. And I do believe it had adjustable rear suspension. And it had bigger wheels. So I kind of... Well, that's all right. I'm very happy with my little Honda. Very happy. Okay. Let's just get the other one off the other sheet. Okay. You know what I think I did? I think when I was turning my part around, instead of putting it, centering it on this little black dot, I centered it on this one down here. Okay. Let's try and get this right now. Okay, where's number nine? All right, here it is. Okay, now remember, it's this one here. Oh, 
how many people noticed yesterday when I was talking about steps 44 and 45 and so on, I kept saying something about 30, you know, 34 and 33 and so on. I'm making a lot of silly mistakes like that lately. I don't notice it until I'm editing that I've said the wrong thing. Okay. I do believe this is the last, the last piece. Why, why can't I pick that up? It's stuck on something. What's going on there? Did I, did I miss one? Yeah, I missed one. Okay, we got it. Okay, as near as I can tell, we have all the pieces we need now for step 44. It's 44, not 34. All right. We might have ourselves a little problem here. And the little problem is not that I could not find my pointing stick. I, uh, problem is that this, these two, and these two are almost identical. And if you remember, I was saying they were they were they were so different that there's no way I was going to you know get them mixed up. But I I didn't realize that 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 piece that I thought was all one was actually two separate pieces. And um, you know what? I think I already did get them mixed up. Now that I'm looking closely at it, I think that I think that. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, this this one and this one go together, and this one and this one go together. I mean, you, you know that that's a, that's that was an honest mistake. You know, I'm not mugging for the camera, if you know what I mean. Um, okay, so um, I'm wondering if I was to lay the parts back on the frets, would I be able to tell by the connection points if there's going to be any difference? You know, if if it is so slight, it is possible that it it wouldn't matter if I accidentally got them in the wrong place. Um, like one, one of these is one of those that has to be bent at a 45 degree angle to go on the platform or on the, yeah, on the platform. So, uh, and then we have to paint our, uh, our, uh, ladders here. It would be nice if I could paint them when they're flat like that and then bend them later. The problem is when I'm bending them, especially the treads, I'm going to chip the paint off. And I'd have to repaint them anyway, so. All right, uh, let's carry on. We've got lots of time yet today. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Now, I know we're out of focus here, right? But right here, we should be sharp. So, this is what I'm going to do. We are not going to use Andy's bender. We're going to use a Tamiya plier. I guess maybe I should turn it around here. pretty good I think all right and let's put that back gotta be careful how I squeeze this and where I got the folding lines up on this yeah I think so It wouldn't be the end of the world if I didn't. Okay. 
Now this is not as as precise as if we had to use uh, Andy's bender. There's no question about that. Getting a little bit a little bit trembly here. And the last one. Now I will not hold it in my fingers when I bend the treads. I'll probably I'll probably lay it down on the green cloth and I won't be using the photo etched plier here either. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. It, it could go together maybe just a little bit more. But on the other hand, we want them sticking out because I might, I might want to wedge it down into the, uh, you, you know, the stairwell. So, okay, we got that done. I'm going to wrap it up for today, folks. Oh, my goodness. I just looked outside, and it's, it's raining again. It stopped about two hours ago, and the road was drying up. You know, this, this could well be the, uh, the first, uh, first day since the end of May that I don't get out on two wheels of some kind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow.